you folks still using Industry 3.0? A new update is available. Industry 4.0 has all kinds of new features like increased automation, more sensors, and data exchange. And it's a pretty big deal. But for us engineers, we can't just click and download and install 4.0. We pretty much need to redesign everything. Yep, and we're going to need to be on top of our game because the industrial environment has all kinds of environmental hazards like electrostatic discharge, temperature fluctuations, power surges. We can't just take all that consumer IoT stuff, wrap some foil around it, and hope it'll work in the industrial world. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today my guest is Craig Morrow from Little Fuse, and we're going to talk about how you can protect your Industry 4.0 designs from industrial grade problems. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about industrial communication protection from Little Fuse. Hi Craig, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Amelia. It's good to be here. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for asking. Okay, so we're here to talk about industrial communication, and I'm especially interested in the reliability in this area. Absolutely. Protecting your industrial communication is extremely important. We're going to spend a little time talking about RS-485 and Ethernet. We're going to go through some application examples and then look at some considerations depending on what kind of environment you're in. We're going to look at some uh, potential electrical threats and then jump into some examples. So Craig, how many nodes are we talking about out there in the marketplace? Amazingly, for industrial nodes in 2020, expected to be about 350 million. If you look at a specific RS-485 versus Ethernet, Ethernet is growing faster and it'll actually surpass RS-485 nodes in 2019. The other things to note about them is that Ethernet certainly runs at a faster speed, up to one gigabyte per second, while RS-45 is limited to 10 megabytes per second. A couple other points, Ethernet has the ability to do power over Ethernet, which is to power the field device, while RS-45 has the ability to transmit longer distance, up to 1,500 meters, while industrial Ethernet is limited to 100 meters. So, Craig, where would you tend to use RS-485 versus Ethernet? Typically, you would want to use Ethernet when you have a lot of data transmission. So example would be security cameras, machine vision systems. When you want to use RS-45 would be longer transmission links, such as remote I.O. or other things where you need to get out in the field, such as energy metering, so forth and so on. So I imagine it's really going to matter where I'm using this. Absolutely. Location is critical to port protection. So if you're going to have a line outside, you know, certainly need to be aware of lightning, both where the outdoor port connection is, as well as where it runs in and connects internal to a building. Long runs you need to be concerned about because you have inductive surge risk. And then wherever a human may touch something, you need to be concerned about electrostatic discharge and interfacing. The other thing you need to be aware of is that wherever motors stop and start can cause electrical fast transients. Can we dive into a little more detail about the specific challenges here? Obviously, one of the challenges is lightning surges, and that can have a big impact to ports that we're trying to protect. Another thing is inductive induced power surges from lightning that can come through other lines and cause an impact to your ports that you want to protect from. Electrostatic discharge, such as a human touching a component, can cause high voltage going into your component. Someone miswiring or improperly connecting a cable can cause damage to equipment by sending too much voltage or current. Another thing can be through electrical fast transients when someone stops or starts a big motor or other kind of equipment, which can be called bouncing. The other thing is it often you can have problems when cables wear and break and it can send wrong power to a port. This can be done with wire ties, too big a bend, or through vibrations. Okay, so for RS-485, what would you recommend for intra-building protection? For intra-building protection, a resettable PPTC or polyswitch positive temperature coefficient can protect against both short circuit and power crosses. Also, for voltage, the TVS doubt array, we have a specific SM712. It is specifically designed for RS-485 and protects against electrostatic discharge 
the electrical fast transients, and some lightning-induced surges. Also, as an alternative, you can use a pulse guard ESD suppressor type PGB or XGD as other alternatives. These all help you align to a bunch of the IEC, ITU, GR, and UL standards. Okay, Craig, so what would be a good solution for outdoor, more harsh environments? Certainly, you're going to need more protection in those environments. We can still use the resettable PPTCs to protect against short circuit and power crosses. For the lightning protection, we can use a combination of a GDT, or gas discharge tube, with a SEDACTOR. With a lightning surge, SEDACTOR will fire really quickly. This will cause more voltage across the PPTC, and at that point, the GDT will fire. It is really important that the resistance of the PPTC be selected carefully for proper coordination with the GDT. So we have some specific products for these protection needs. For PPTC, we have the TRF, TS, and TSV series. For GDT, we have our GTC series. And for SEDACTOR, we have our various series starting with P. Okay, so switching over to the Ethernet side, what are some of the intra-building recommendations you have for me here? Yes, for intra-building protection, you can generally use a simple diode array, such as our SRV series. This will give you poor protection from electrostatic discharge and electrical fast transients, and when this is used in an application where lightning is not a concern. One of the advantages of this diode array is its low capacitance, which enables high transmission speeds. If you need data speeds of greater than one gigabytes per second, you're going to require additional twisted pairs than the example shown here above. Okay, and what about going outdoors with Ethernet? Certainly, going outdoors with Ethernet into a harsh environment will require additional protection. One of the things we can do is for overcurrent is protect with the Telelink 461 series fuses. These are specifically designed for high-speed telecon applications, and you only need one fuse per wire pair. For protecting against lightning, we suggest a GDT with the diode array. You can see the GDT on the front side of the transformer and the diode array on the back side of the transformer. The class ratings will determine exactly what specific protection you need, but an example would be 4 kilovolts at 2 kiloamps. The GDT series that you should look at is SG, CG6, and C65, and the dial array can be LC03 series and SP40 series. Now, what about power over Ethernet? Certainly, as you know, power over an Ethernet powers remote devices via the Ethernet cable. We can also use Telelink fuses here for overcurrent protection, such as the 461 series. For voltage protection, we can use a TVS diode. They can be used across the center tap signal pair and a second one across the center top spare pair. The TVS diode can be chosen based on your surge needs for the specific application. You had 400 watts, 600 watts, 1500 watts, or 3 kilowatts. In the TVS diode, we recommend you looking at is the SMCJ series. This is fantastic, Craig. Now, where can I go for more information? So when you look at the places to get great information, I would suggest you look at some of the key links we've provided here for you. We have a very detailed Ethernet protection design guide. How to select fuses is our fusology guide. We have electrostatic discharge suppression design guide, electronic discharge protection design guide, and a circuit protection solutions guide. Also, please go to our general web link at www.littlefuse.com. Okay, so Craig, we have covered a lot today, but can you summarize your main points for me? Absolutely. It's amazing that by 2020, we're going to have over 350 million nodes for RS-485 and Ethernet. Typically, RS-485 will be used when you need to have longer runs, such as remote I.O., while Ethernet will be used when you need more data speeds, such as security cameras or imaging systems. Your external and internal environment in your building will impact your protection needs. This will also be coupled with the standards. Lightning electrostatic discharge, electrical fast transients, and inductive surges, and shorts and other potential hazards will also impact your protection needs. Fuses PPTCs can be used for overcurrent protections, while certainly TBS diodes, TBS diodes arrays, GDTs, and adapters can be used for overvoltage protection. Excellent. So before we go, I'm going to click that link and find more information on a Mauser.com page. Well, Craig, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure speaking with you. It has been a real pleasure to spend some time here with you today. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about industrial communication protection from Little Fuse.
For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. Can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube. Keyword EE Journal.